Hey guys, Michael here. So this is part two of a two-part series. Uh, if you watched my video before, it is basically showing the unboxing of this wind generator and uh, just kind of showing you what's included in here. And this one is basically about you know, why I chose this generator and uh, what else did I buy with it. So the reason I chose this generator is one, we live in Houston, Texas, where there's hurricanes here all the time. We've always procrastinated about getting a generator and never have. Um, I didn't want to spend an arm and a leg on one. We just needed one for the essentials, like for a freezer or a small window unit or recently a heater, um, just to get us by. Because usually we don't, we're not out of power for a long time. And if, if it's a big enough storm, we're getting out of here. But um, we recently had a big freeze here in Houston. It's something just something you don't normally see at all. Uh, it got down to 17 degrees here, and because of that, the power grid in Houston just wasn't prepared for it. We actually lost power. They tried to do some you know, blackout circles around the area that seems like our area was just out all the time, and uh, we didn't have power for three days. I mean, it maybe came on for like 30 minutes at a time every eight hours or so. It was just, it wouldn't do you any good. It didn't give you any kind of a heat or you know, warmth to kind of get out of that cold. So when I woke up in the morning, uh, a couple of those days, it was 32 degrees, I'm sorry, 34 degrees inside our home. And that's just unbearable. And, and we have luckily uh, a gas stove, so we were able to cook on a gas stove and we have a little gas fireplace that puts out about this much heat away from the fireplace so we all cuddled up around the fireplace to try to stay warm um, but there was no lights you know we didn't have any kind of a uh, way to light up the room at night or even provide a little space here or whatnot so we decided to get a generator now again I didn't want to spend an arm and leg so I decided on a 2000 watt range generator and I did a lot of uh, back and forth and research, and I found this website called uh, generatorbible.com. I'll put a link to that down below. It does a really good job of comparing generators. You can just kind of add them to your short list, and you can add, compare a bunch of them. But I found it easier to compare only about a four of them at a time because you can see them all on one page. If you add too many to the comparison, it would, it would flip to another page. It's hard to visualize and compare the options. Uh, another thing it, neat thing it does is when you compare them, if you read the top wording on there, it actually kind of says the customers ended up buying this, whereas this one's a little bit lighter and this one lasts a little bit longer. And it tells you about the, the ga gallons per hour that they use and kind of compare them all. So that's a really helpful website. Um, the reason I chose Win over all of them is one, I have uh, a couple of products already by Win. I'm really happy with them. Um, they're woodworking product, but uh, I haven't had any complaints about them. I was comparing this with the Westinghouse, and I wanted something as high a wattage as I could, but still in the suitcase style generator. And this one in Westinghouse were the highest ones they had that I could find. And Westinghouse was out of stock on Amazon, so uh, when was my... Uh, Again, I was kind of teeter tottering between the two. Wynn was in stock, so I decided to go with Wynn. Now, I did reach out to Wynn via Instagram on their social media page and asked them, do they have any recommendations? You know, do they, is there any models one way or the other better than the other? I did not get a response from Wynn. Um, you know, nothing against Wynn. I, again, I had their products, I really like their products, so don't hold that against them. Uh, but I did ask them and they, did, they didn't respond to me. Um, so this one here is uh, maximum 2,350 watts. It is a running 1,900 watts, which would work well for a refrigerator and a couple of things. We'll just have to juggle back and forth on what we can run on a 2,000 watt generator, um, but I think it's gonna be enough for us. This, this is mainly more for camping in our, if you have an RV or something, um, but it's gonna suit us just fine, I think, here in the home until we decide to spin three thousand six thousand dollars on a whole house generator i did add a few things to it so one it doesn't have an, an output meter on here to show you you know um how long you use this so i actually mounted an hour meter right here on the top 
and uh, I'll show you here real quick on exactly what I had to, what I had to go through to mount it. Um, I did that during the process of filling up with oil. Uh, I also added a, a dipstick to this. So I bought a Win branded magnetic tip dipstick. And I'll show you here in a second in this video exactly just what does it look like and just inserting it in there. And basically it replaces your old dipstick, the plastic dipstick that comes on here and it has a platinum metal tip. I'm sorry, it's aluminum dipstick. It has a magnetic tip on there. And what that does is as your engine's running, it's gonna have flakes of metal that start wear and tear on this thing. It's gonna uh, settle in the bottom of your oil tank. Well, that, um, that magnet's gonna grab that and hold onto it so it doesn't recirculate back into the engine. So when you change your oil, you can pull the dipstick out and wipe that uh, shavings and stuff off of there and then put it back in. So it just kind of keeps the motor from getting those metal contaminants floating through the motor. Um, I did also purchase, uh, when I made this purchase, I purchased the a warranty for it through Amazon. Wynn provides a two-year warranty on this one. Uh, I've had good luck with the warranty on Amazon through, I think, Asurion. I'm not sure how to say that, but I think that's how you say it. So I went ahead and opted for the four-year warranty uh, with this product. I think the product, the Asurion, was uh, $79.00. And again, this is a two-year warranty. A sure gun's a four-year warranty. So that gives me a two more year warranty on this. And what they've done in the past with our remote control cars is when the kid breaks it and it doesn't work anymore, what a sure gun will do is basically give you your money back on what you paid for, for that product. And you do have to ship um, something of that car back to them. I thought, forgot what it was. I think I actually had to ship the car, but not the batteries. So they do want something back in return to, to prove you're not actually just making a claim and getting your money back. However, that's what I did with this. I went ahead and got the Asuri on four year warranty for this. That was the longest warranty I can get for this generator. Um, also, I went ahead and picked up uh, Amazon Basic uh, power cord. This is a 12 gauge, 100 foot cord. It does have three plugs on the one side. Uh, that way we can run this outside, backyard, um, and run a cable into the house to get to the refrigerator or get to an air conditioner or whatever we need to power. So I did purchase this with this unit and, along with the hour meter and the magnetic dipstick. Um, one thing you're going to need to purchase when you, when you buy this is a quart of oil. Uh, it takes this one is 17.1 ounces of oil. Um, I ended up going with the Valvoline's full synthetic 10W30. You could do conventional oil, but um, I, I choose synthetic. It seems uh, I like it better. Um, so that's that's why I ended up with here. So whenever I put this thing together, you'll see in a video of me adding oil to the spark plug um, hole here. So what I did was I actually put some oil in here uh, remove the spark plug, put some oil in there, uh, about a capful uh, from the from the lid of that oil, and then slowly pulled the starter with no spark plug in there, so there's no compression. It's really easy to pull, and I'm, it's you know just a safety precaution. I wanted to kind of lube the inside of the cylinder from the top side of it, so that uh, during the initial start, it's just not gonna it just gives a little more lubrication lubrication when it runs. Um, it is going to make it smoke a little bit because that oil is going to have to come out the exhaust. So don't freak out if you if you do that and see that. That's to be expected because I literally poured oil into the uh, cylinder there. But again, that's just to lubricate it, and, and before the oil starts pumping and getting through the engine, I at least want to lubricate the cylinder wall um, to just make it last you know, that much more. Um, Okay, so enough with the rambling. Here is a picture of the dipstick, the aluminum one on the bottom one, plastic one on the top, and this is just how you insert it and just screw it in there. Okay, so as far as the hour meter goes, this is all you get. You get the hour meter, a cable, and a couple of screws to mount the hour meter. To actually mount the hour meter, I had to remove these four screws and take off the side panel because that allows you access to the spark plug. Now, what I ended up doing was completely wrong on this setup, and I'll see if I can show you. Um, but uh, to get to the spark plug wire, it, it, it was a task. 
I had to take two fingers okay. on each side of it to try to wiggle the cable out of there, but eventually I was able to get that cable out of there. And to get a better um, grasp of that uh, spark plug cable, I actually had to take this little hose off of here and just carefully pull it out of the way, and now I can actually get to the spark plug cable wire, because what you have to do for the hour meter is wrap the cord around the spark plug cable for it to actually trigger it being ran for the hour meter to actually operate. Okay, so here I am installing the hour meter cable, and what you have to do is basically wrap it around the spark plug cable. Um, you have to do it about seven or eight times of wrapping. It ends up being about an inch or so of the length of that spark plug cable, so I have to push that heat shield down a little bit. However, all this effort was wasted because I actually had to undo this all and redo it because of the way I rounded my um, hour meter cable, I was unable to feed it back up. And you'll see here in a second the way I mounted it. So what I should have done is drilled my hole, routed the cable down, and then wrapped it instead of wrapping it here first. And I'll show you that here in a second. So while I had everything off, I want to go ahead and remove the spark plug here. And using the included tool they give you, it took a little bit of force to get that to, to turn. I actually had to get it from a different angle because this, you can see I'm struggling pretty hard there to actually get it open. But I was able to get it open and uh, remove this spark plug. And then I took my funnel, inserted it in there, and actually added uh, almost a cap full of oil in there to help give it a little bit of lubrication before it gives that first run that way it's not a dry start um, with with just metal on metal i want to give it some kind of lubrication there with the spark plug removed i'm able to give it a few pulls that way the Pistons jumping up and down and uh, mixing the oil in there. That way it's nice and lubricated to start with. So this is where I decided to mount my hour meter and I had to drill a hole through the plastic of the top of the case and here's where I made the mistake. I should have drilled the hole first and pushed my wire down from the top versus trying to push it up from the bottom because as you can see there's hardly any room to get your fingers in there and um, anyway so I had to undo my wires that I wrapped before and put them from the top down. However, I think the hour meter looks really nice sitting at this location. So that's it. Um, appreciate you watching. Now again, I'll put everything uh, that I purchased here in the comments below. You can take a look at it and purchase it if you're interested in it. I get no commission off of this. This is just, you know, this is my review of it and just what I did for my setup here. Um, again, this this wind generator is model 56235i. It's 1900 running, 2350 max. This generator cost me $441 on Amazon in you know, March of 2021. And I got the four year warranty, the four year Assurial warranty through, through Amazon was uh, $77. The magnetic dipstick that replaces the plastic one inside there, that was 11 bucks. The hour meter that I have up here, because you need to know, you know what the hour, how many hours you ran this for uh, maintenance purposes, you need, when you need to change the oil, when you need to check different things. That hour meter was also $11. Um, the cord, 12 gauge cord, 100 foot long with the three plugs on the end, that one was $65. Uh, 
and um, lastly I think the oil was about eight dollars and I got that from a local auto parts store one final thing I did just to help me keep track of this for the maintenance is I made a, a little log of this and it has some dates and you get you know, the the hour meters for, for running this thing on a monthly basis so you can write down when did you start when did you stop and then it has like when did you change your oil when did you clean the air filter uh, clean out the spark rest and also inspect your plug and the idea behind this I'm just going to write down the um, based on the hour meter the hours I did this so I'll know when I did this because everything's based on hours um, I'll also include a copy of this if you're interested in the uh, comments put a link to that uh, down below so that's it. Uh, appreciate you watching and uh, see you next time.